Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat. I am a consultant gynecological endoscopic surgeon practicing in Mumbai, India. And today we are going to be looking at one of the pathologies that shows up very commonly in patients who are trying to get pregnant, which is block tubes and hydrosalpins. So let's take a look at exactly what these two conditions are and how they affect patients who are trying to get pregnant. Essentially, uh, why do the fallopian tubes get blocked? So before that, I hope you have already seen my informational video on uh, what is the anatomy of the female genital tract and how exactly the fallopian tubes look like when we are actually doing surgery. If you have not, then I'm going to put a link in the comment section below so please be sure to have a look at that video as well. Uh, so once we know what exactly the fallopian tubes are, let's start discussing about how these fallopian tubes get blocked in the first place. Most of the times, the reasons for blockage of the fallopian tubes is some sort of a pelvic infection, or in India particularly, it could be tuberculosis. This pelvic infection sometimes comes as an ascending infection from the vagina and tuberculosis is very prevalent in the Indian population and so you could have a reactivation of tuberculosis during periods of extreme stress. Uh, most of the times patients with blocked tubes do not have any symptoms at all other than the fact that they are trying to get pregnant but are not able to do so. Block tubes are mostly diagnosed on a diagnostic test, which is called as a hysterosalpingogram or an HSG, in which a dye is injected through the cervix into the uterus. And then the dye shows up as a block in one or both of the fallopian tubes, meaning that the dye cannot spill completely outside into the peritoneal cavity. This is also described in detail in the anatomical educational video. In any case, uh, let's come to the main important part, which is the treatment of block tubes. So the primary question that we are trying to discuss is, uh, can these block tubes be opened or not? Now, uh, in understanding whether block tubes can be opened or not, it is very important to understand what is the level of blockage of this particular tube, meaning that uh, whether it is a proximal block, it is a mid-tubal block, or it is a distal block. And these levels of blockage will be evident on uh, the HSG which has been performed. It is important to understand that a mid-tubal block and a distal tubal block are not very good candidates for surgery and for reopening the tube. However, a proximal block is a good candidate and the tube can be opened on in a lot of cases without any problems. The one thing that you need to understand as a patient is that when you have a tube which is blocked, from a surgeon's perspective, it could either be a tube which is blocked without any evidence of disease or damage, or it could be a tube which has been diseased. Let me repeat that. It could be a tube which has been blocked by some disease which has managed to block the tube but has not damaged the structure and function of the tube. This is a tube that can be opened. However, there could be a possibility that the disease process has damaged the structure or the function of the tube to such an extent that the structure and the function of the tube cannot be recreated anymore. In this case, the tube cannot be opened. Now, how does one distinguish between these two conditions? That means a simple block tube versus 
a damaged tube? Well, the answer to that again is hysteroscopy and laparoscopy, in which we are able to inspect the tubes. We are able to take a look at their structure. We are also able to inspect by a very, very small mini laparoscope the inside of the fallopian tube. This, other than hysteroscopy and laparoscopy, is a separate technique called salpingoscopy. So, in salpingoscopy, we are able to actually take a look at the inside of the fallopian tube and determine whether or not this tube is healthy. And hence, hysteroscopy and laparoscopy form a very important part of the assessment because after a tube is found to be blocked by an HSG, if the tube is actually damaged as confirmed on laparoscopy, then there is no point in trying for a natural conception anymore. It would be a very good idea to go directly for IVF. However, if the tube is only blocked, it can be opened up in a majority of cases and then the patient can try for a normal pregnancy and the cost and time of IVF is completely saved. The other condition, of course, where you may have a blocked tube, which we are going to deal with in one of our subsequent videos, is called as a hydrosalpings which is not only a blocked tube, but also a swollen tube. And the management of this condition is a little bit different from a simple blocked tube. So we are going to look at that condition in our next video. Uh, but if you like this video and you thought it was relevant, please leave a message in the comment section and please be sure to subscribe to our channel to keep receiving more updates. Thank you.